Welcome everybody to Go Local Live. I'm Josh Fenton, CEO and co-founder. A few updates, Governor Raimondo just left her press briefing at one o'clock. She announced that the schools will be closed till May 1st. Distance learning will continue. Uh, new cases have now pushed us up over 400 in Rhode Island. Obviously testing is still a challenge, but the uh, doubling happened in just three days. So we're continuing to watch those trends as they develop. Joining us now is Stefan Pryor, Commerce Secretary for the State of Rhode Island. Stefan, thanks so much for joining us. My pleasure to be with you, Josh. Um, we're in a bit of an economic tsunami, something that certainly neither one of us has ever seen like this. We are probably due for a recession. Then we get a health care crisis that the world hasn't seen, I think, probably since 1918. Couple that with an, an economic shutdown. What are your thoughts from an overview standpoint? This is a very t tough set of circumstances. There's no doubt about it. Uh, businesses are being asked to take on burdens that they've never seen before. Small businesses all across our economy, larger businesses as well, no one is exempt from the impacts. Um, I'm amazed by the creativity of businesses, the generosity of businesses, the flexibility of businesses in Rhode Island. We've seen businesses large and small stepping up to give to charity, to give away any face masks or hand sanitizer they may have in excess We've seen businesses adapting to digital methods, sales online, remote working, all manner of um, creativity. We've seen associations like the Rhode Island Manufacturers Association step up and really offer templates to industrial plants on how to adapt to ensure social distance among workers, to upgrade procedures, and to, frankly, to self-police in a benign and helpful way. So I'm, I'm really uplifted by our businesses. Um, that doesn't diminish uh, this recognition that so many business people, especially sole proprietorships and smaller mom and pop shops and smaller businesses in general are suffering. They really are. There are restrictions that are being placed on businesses. Of course, this is not just in Rhode Island, as a matter of fact, Ours are not the most stringent. It's worth noting, ours are not the most stringent. Only recently have there been some new restrictions placed upon retailers beyond restaurants and bars. And we have not created essential and non-essential lists for manufacturers and frankly shut down bigger parts of our economy as other states have. We're trying very, very hard to be vigorous in the promotion and the protection of public health, but also to be very thoughtful and disciplined as pertains to making these moves that can harm businesses. Uh, on Sunday, I believe it was, was it Sunday? It all, it all blurs together whether it's Saturday or Sunday. Saturday, I guess. Uh, Saturday. The governor, yeah, Saturday, the governor announced these uh, closures. Do you want to go through kind of the, we don't have to go through every nuance of it and every listing, but what the sure. philosophy was of which fell into which bucket? Uh, understandable. First of all, again, the governor um, only engages in closures reluctantly and has been trying, as she puts it, to maintain some semblance, semblance a significant semblance of an economy. So she, uh, again, you know, our neighboring states have already gone to their essential and non-essential lists uh, before us. But in the retail domain, we created a category of critical businesses and non-critical businesses. Um, I'm the commerce guy. For me, every business is important. Don't get me wrong. Uh, but um, the critical businesses are life-sustaining businesses, Josh, and other businesses that provide that provide essentials to families and to so businesses. The, so the number okay. one, the number one question that came out was why guns are essential and bookstores are closed. Uh, sorry, Josh, could you still see me? I had a peculiar thing happen to my screen here. Can you come on over? Uh, I can uh, see you just fine. Okay, very good. Uh, forgive me, technical difficulties in this new era. <laughs> uh, go, go with it. You look great. We can still okay, see you. Good. So um, the question was about guns. 
Guns um, are open, but bookstores are closed. Right. Um, so the concern pertaining to guns is that um, we are loath to require people to order guns from afar and, if, uh, if legally obtained, receive them at home and try them for the first time on, if you will, a mail order basis. Because yeah. even if it's an experienced individual who understands firearms and is familiar with them, if it's a new item, if it's a new particular gun, we don't want them trying it for the first time at home. Better to be done in a professional, in a safe environment like a gun shop. That's number one. So safety first. But also, we are very cognizant of and ever monitoring our surrounding states and the national trends. And we want to be in the mainstream when we feel we are compelled to do any closures. And in our region, Connecticut and New Hampshire have maintained gun shops as open. And across the country, there's a, a large number of states that have kept them open and kept them on their essential list. We call ours our critical list. So those are two of the reasons among multiple. As to bookshops, we're extremely focused on helping uh, bookshop owners continue to provide their books to residents who, quite frankly, Rhode Islanders may be home and be, may be looking for a good book um, because right. they're home and they're looking for more. So we're actively working with booksellers who want to reach out to us on helping them become even more technically hooked up and savvy, uh, which is to say we have a technical support hotline and a series of vendors, most of whom are Rhode Island businesses that have offered their services for free to consult with especially businesses with 10 employees or fewer. Many bookshops would fall into that category. But also, if you're a small business, reach out to us. Call 521-HELP or check out commerceri.com. And we have an array of support personnel who are ready to help booksellers sell their books online. And I know we've already had some takers among them. Um, and I, if you don't mind, Josh, I just want to give a little bit of credit and then on to the next question, of course. Sure. But looking at my notes, these are the partners who are tech support professionals and businesses that are helping their fellow Rhode Islanders. District Hall Providence, that's part of the Cambridge Innovation Center, uh, the Wexford Building, District Hall is helping coordinate these tech support offerings. The Tech Collective, our Rhode Island organization of tech businesses and organizations, Brave River, Vertical Six, Infosys, HCH Enterprises, The Right Click, GladWorks, Howell Legal, Marinello Law, all of these under the guidance of Suli Co on our commerce team are helping businesses get online. So uh, bookshops, if you're out there and you're listening and you want some help in putting a new payments function on your website, digital payments, or just upgrading your website in ways that will be more user friendly for remote purchasing or whatever you might need, please reach out. Great, and I appreciate that. And it's great to see those Rhode Island companies step up to offer some support. Uh, the other big question is, uh, are there appointment only opportunities for new car dealers, used car dealers? Is that allowable under the new structure? Yes, um, I say yes and I ask any business looking to do an appointments only system to please contact DBR, look at the website dbr.ri.gov and there's a way to, uh, to input questions or comments through the website or just reach out to DBR. Um, we're asking that you work that out with the DBR director, Liz Tanner, and her colleagues. But auto, make, uh, auto shops, uh, forgive me, um, auto sellers um, and uh, auto appliance dealers would be a good example, Josh. Yeah. Where you've got a major piece of equipment, rarely will a family want to purchase one without being able to see it at least briefly and understand it. Will it physically fit in the case of an appliance? Is it a good replacement with what they have? Will it hook up to what they've got in their home, in their kitchen? These are reasonable things, but we, we don't want crowds in these shops because that presents a health hazard. As you know, we have to maintain social distance and, and you know, there are some numbers that are climbing um, in terms of health indicators, negative health indicators right now. So um, yes, appointments only is possible. Please contact DBR. Great. Um, let's go over to the stimulus. Uh, last Friday, President Trump signed a $2 trillion, I didn't know that trillion would be so much in our 
vocabulary yeah, these days, right. but two trillion dollar yes. stimulus package. And uh, we're trying to learn how those dollars are going to flow. I'm sure you're trying to learn how those dollars are going to flow. Correct. Uh, uh, you're bombarded by small business people. We get bombarded by small business people. What can we tell them as of right now on Monday, uh, March 30th? Okay, um, we, can, we can tell small business people and all business people that we are proactively engaging federal officials and we're keeping in touch with our fellow state officials to track all the information. I'm gonna summarize in broad outline form what's in the package and we're trying very vigorously to make sure we get the latest and greatest so as soon as it's possible to go online with programs, we do. We also, you should know that Rhode Island is the convener of a national network of state economic development officials, my counterparts from around the country. We chair and convene fellow officials for weekly calls now so we can trade notes, so we're all up to speed. Uh, but here's the basic outline. There are forgivable loans for small business that are in the package. There are employee retention credits that are in the package, and there are recovery rebates. Um, among the programs, um, there's something called the Paycheck Protection Program, which offers $10 million loans available for businesses with fewer than 500 employees who paid employees' salaries and payroll taxes or contractors eligible for loans, uh, up to 250% of payroll. We're going to explore more about how that's supposed to come online and how uh, those loans are going to be available for those dollar amounts. There is emergency economic injury disaster loans or EIDLs, emergency injury disaster loans. Um, that's that's for smaller businesses for loans uh, under $200,000 with certain requirements, guarantee requirements, and certain waivers of pre-existing rules. Uh, that's in addition to the SBA Express Bridge Loan Pilot Program that's in effect already, the SBA loans. I, I say all of those things to say, there's no set of materials that that's been issued to a state or for that matter to a, an individual business with more detail or with applications. We're gonna bring those things forward as soon as humanly possible. There is also the recovery rebates category of assistance, of course. That's the $1,200 uh, per adult and $500 per child rebate. That's not as much for a business, but if you're a sole proprietor or if you're just struggling at the moment, you should track those as well. We'll be providing information on all of the above on our Commerce RI website. Don't look yet because quite frankly, the information from Washington is very thin at this point. But uh, with your permission, Josh, perhaps we'll even come back to this program or another Please. of yours to go local and provide more information. That's great. Um, Stefan, you have the unique experience of working for the authority that helped um, New York City recover uh, after the 9-11 attack and rebuild the city. Um, you know, maybe most important is when is the light at the end of the tunnel, um, intellectually, emotionally, and how do you uh, instill confidence into the economic community uh, as we work our way through this? Uh, very good question, Josh. And I'll tell you, I have been consult consulting my own memory of different disasters. You know, I've. Um, Everyone has connection to disasters and unfortunate tragedies in life. Um, in my case, in my professional life, I have had experience with the World Trade Center disaster. I lived very close to the World Trade Center and worked on the rebuilding for five years, as you refer to. Um, I worked uh, closely with folks on the ground in Louisiana after Hurricane Katrina. Um, I've. Uh, th this is more on a on a narrow. Uh, short time frame basis. I, I was in Haiti after their their own natural disaster years ago. Uh, I was education commissioner in Connecticut during Sandy Hook, unfortunately, and that was a profound tragedy. Uh, absolutely heartbreaking, and um, and none none of these things can be compared to one another in a sense. Each is unique in its own characteristics. I will say to you that um, this particular situation involves some very rare elements. 
Um, it's still unknown precisely how long the COVID-19 virus itself will exist on this planet. If herd immunity will develop, if a vaccine will ultimately wipe it out for all intents and purposes, if there'll be another therapy or cure that will come along, we don't yet know. So uh, what we're working towards under Governor Raimondo is borrowing from the lessons of Singapore, South Korea, regions of China that have had extensive experience, unfortunately, with the virus and have themselves begun to recover. We're aiming to learn from them the sequence in which they were able to bring businesses back online. We're aiming to learn from them the protective systems that they put in place so that we can monitor where the virus may be, where infection may be occurring, how we can keep people safe and how we can maintain workplaces that are themselves safe. So we're working on gaining a new body of knowledge based upon recent experiences in other jurisdictions across the world. And we're looking to be very proactive in working with employers to set up the right systems. Um, and I can tell you in the context of these other disasters, even unfortunately having some experience with multiple tragedies and disasters, um, there's very little that specifically prepares you to manage with this type of widespread global problem with supply chain failures, with new elements like the need to ever be in detection mode pertaining to this virus that no one yet has immunity yet, or if it's, if it's uh, uh, you know, a handful of humans, uh, it's inadequate uh, to remedy the problem. These are really extraordinary negative conditions, um, but what I'm very confident about and very encouraged by is the leadership of Governor Raimondo, the way that Rhode Islanders have rallied. I, I think we will be in the recovery able to, in a way that is durable and sound and smart, emerge from this. Uh, the last point I wanted to make, Ken Flarsky has a piece today uh, about innovation. Uh, it is this rare opportunity for, I think, many entrepreneurs, whether you own a restaurant and you're, you're functionally shut down, or you own any business that's uh, impacted, to really rethink your entire way of what you do and how you do it how to streamline it, how to make it more digital. It is this point of innovation, and it's gonna transform how all of us work together and compete against each other as we come out of this. What advice do you have to folks who are sitting at home, stressing and straining that they've laid off their folks, that they don't know if their business is ever gonna reopen? What possible advice on the innovation front that they can think about and start putting their minds together uh, about bringing their business forward? A very good question, Josh. I, I do think that um, it's essential that businesses think about the trends that are going to exist well beyond this time frame, even if it is limited, we hope it's limited, around coronavirus. Um, we were already going digital as a local, as a national, as a global economy but this is going to accelerate that. I bet you have the same experience, Josh. I'm finding that I have colleagues and friends who are working from home who are saying, I never would have done this, but I kind of like it. Yeah. So interestingly, that's going to have profound effects upon uh, employers and their decision-making about the technology they employ, about the requirements they have as to desks and offices. Frankly, it's gonna have a profound effect upon brick and mortar real estate. So these are things we're gonna to have to track, but as to what businesses may wanna think about um, leaning into, it's the digital trend, um, it's ensuring that you have a virtual presence and, and operational capability that is digital. Um, I think also a couple other things about the Rhode Island economy. We, the Raimondo administration, and we, Rhode Island as a whole, have been investing in our bioscience assets, institutions, and infrastructure. We have such assets par excellence. We have Brown's Medical School. We have two leading medical systems, Lifespan Care New England. We have 
outstanding nursing schools at URI and RIC. We have neuroscience excellence throughout multiple institutions, including our Veterans Administration and the aforementioned private and public universities. We have innovation occurring at RISD as to medical devices and companies like Zymedica that have drawn upon that expertise and help companies enter the market and design new medical devices. I could go on. We have a strong medical infrastructure and we have noteworthy medical prowess here in Rhode Island. I think the new world that we are entering is going to be much more cognizant of the need for medical research globally. I think that uh, the new world we are entering is going to look for ways to invest in techniques that will keep people healthy and safe as pertains to viruses and potential pandemics. We'd be out of our minds if we didn't anticipate future events like this, future scenarios like this, but also across the board in other areas where we ought to be investing more and propelling ourselves forward medically. I think Rhode Island is positioned, but I think we need to even further strengthen our position so that we can draw upon the new global emphasis upon medicine and upon health solutions so that Rhode Island can benefit its own population in terms of health, but also in terms of economy. So you'll see that we'll be emphasizing the, these points even more going forward. There's never been a time in which Rhode Island's flexibility, smallness, could be a major advantage to coming out of this global recession, depression, whatever it is. I think it's a matter of how fast people can embrace it. And it, you know, listen, I've talked to some major employers who say, I think we're more efficient in some ways. Um, and then the other thought is not only efficient at certain levels, Daryl West, who at the Brookings uh, was on last week and wrote uh, a pretty big The Future of Work uh, 18 months ago. And he talked about, listen, some tiers of jobs may not come back. That mid-level person who in a big organization made sure people were doing their job, that type of job may not come back, but, but those people have talent and may go out and innovate their own businesses. Very true, and I think for people who are home now, whether it's by choice, because you asked your employer for the opportunity to work at home, which benefits society right now, whether it's because you're observing the stay home directive of the governor, whatever the reason, whether you've been displaced from your job, uh, I think it's an opportunity to skill up, which is to say, um, find online coursework, and thankfully there's more than ever available, certificate programs from universities, other stackable certificates in different employment areas, cybersecurity, coding, other areas of interest that may not be specifically technology focused, but may have a te technology dimension. Um, I think it would be beneficial for Rhode Islanders to start to skill up because you're right, Josh, the future of work was already going to be more digital, more requiring of higher education, even if not a four-year college degree, some higher ed. Now, even more so, because there's going to be a greater dependent, dependence upon things digital, and we are going to be accelerating into a world where, world where the medical professions are, are looming even larger, as they should. So I, I think people ought to, if they're able, if they can find the time while at home, skill up even more. and. Governor Raimondo is going to guide us to do more in the way of providing tools of these kinds and uh, a vision of this kind going forward. So um, you, if, you're, if you're able to jump the gun and scale up now, even better. Uh, Stephen Pryor, I wanna thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, thank you for the update. Uh, look forward to hearing from you again as soon as you have the details on the federal stimulus, how it's gonna work, how people can connect, how they can apply, and how long it will take them uh, to be able to get those much needed dollars into their businesses and thus into the Rhode Island economy. Uh, thank you for all your work. Uh, you. I know, like yeah. us, you're working uh, kind of 24 seven. Uh, there's no trips to Maui right now uh, no. during this crisis. So thank, thank you and thanks your whole thank team you. over at Commerce. Well, one last note out there, Josh, do you mind? Please. 
If any business person had a question about something that we discussed, 521 help, 401, of course, 521 help. And let me throw this specific question out there. If you, a business person out there listening, have applied for an SBA loan, we're interested in monitoring exactly how that's going, the Federal Small Business Administration loan process. Uh, if you can call into 521 help or contact someone at Rhode Island Commerce, you already know. If you could let us know if you've been approved for a loan, and these have started to happen, Rhode Island was one of the very first states that got the authorization for the program, so loans have started to be approved. I'd like to know how long you're being told until the dollars flow, and if you could tell us when the dollars flow. We're trying to monitor this system, stay in close touch with, the, with our congressional delegation, which has been phenomenal. So if you could phone that into us, if you have information, let us know. And if you have any question, feel free to call us. Uh, Stephan Pryor, thanks so much. Secretary of Commerce, State of Rhode Island. Uh, thanks everybody for tuning in. We'll have more updates during the afternoon and into the evening. This is the fastest moving story I think anybody in the news or uh, business has seen uh, anywhere in the United States or on the globe. Uh, thanks so much for tuning in. Greatly appreciate Thank it. We'll talk to you soon. Appreciate it.